Hi everybody. So uh, the hospital asked us to make a just-in-time video for basic management of a ventilator. Um, and so I'm going to make a quick video here concentrating on really the basic modes that are necessary. This video is not intended to go into advanced modes of ventilation. But supposing that we do have a surge in the ICU and many of the non-intensivists are asked to help manage patients, um, here's kind of an overview. So firstly, uh, we're going to confine this conversation to <clears throat> volume control modes of ventilation. We are not going to talk about pressure support, nor are we going to talk about pressure control. We're just going to talk about straight up volume control. Within volume control, there are a couple of things that you have to dial in. The first one is the mode. I think for our conversation today, we're going to talk about what we refer to at George Washington as PRVC, which is really the same thing as assist control with variable gas flow. In other words, how fast the person is able to inhale um, varies in a PRVC mode. Otherwise, it's the same thing as assist control, and I'm going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about SIMV mode, nor are we going to talk about pressure support mode. The next knob that you're going to have to tinker with is the respiratory rate. The one after that is the tidal volume. The one after that is the FIO2. And lastly, the PEEP. Those are the main uh, variables that you have to dial into the ventilator. Remember that <clears throat> respiratory rate times tidal volume equals the minute ventilation. This minute ventilation is inversely proportional to the PCO2. In other words, as the minute ventilation goes up, the PCO2 goes down. Remember that the PCO2 um, is uh, related to the pH. As the PCO2 starts to go up, the pH will start to go down. So an increase in PCO2 results in a decrease in the pH or a respiratory acidosis. This is an important relationship to understand. And that's why this is the only number ultimately you care about. If a guy has acidotic, you want to raise the minute ventilation and blow off the acid. How you raise it, respiratory rate versus tidal volume, we'll talk about in a second. These two variables, FiO2 and PEEP, are the ones that mainly affect oxygenation. So this will affect your PaO2. Going up on the PEEP to a large degree, and obviously the amount of oxygen you provide, improves the O2 sat. Long story short. So let's go through each of these things in turn, okay? <clears throat> let's start by talking about PRVC for a second. The way PRVC works is, Here's time, here's the tidal volume. We are on a volume control mode of ventilation, which means we control how much volume, how much air the patient gets. Let's just say that we decided to dial in a tidal volume of 500 milliliters, okay? And we've dialed in a respiratory rate of 10. That means one breath every six seconds. Six times 10 is a minute. So here's the patient, he's breathing. The, each cycle will be six seconds long and he's breathing 500 cc's each time because that's what we said. In a PRVC mode or an assist control mode, if the person decides to breathe right there, he or she will get a fully supported breath. So yes, you dialed in a respiratory rate of 10, the patient decided he wants to breathe 14 times per minute, those additional four breaths will receive 500 milliliters of air with very little effort. All the person has to do is contract their diaphragm a little bit, <clears throat> the machine will sense a negative change in the airway pressure, and in doing so, it'll go ahead and deliver 500 milliliters of air, almost like a piston being pushed into, into the mouth. No effort required for the patient. Now, <clears throat> if the person is not paralyzed, the, how fast the air goes in differs a little bit on how they like it. So the machine uses a computer algorithm to detect resistance to the flow and kind of figures out, do you like your air really fast, really slow, kind of a combination in the middle, and that generates better patient comfort, PRVC. If you take somebody on PRVC and you give them rocuronium, you functionally converted that back to assist control because the person no longer has any effort related to the air, they're paralyzed, so the machine will just come up with a number, something like 60 to 80 liters per minute, and just give it. Um, and, but regardless, at the end of the day, your patient is guaranteed X amount of air that you've chosen for however many times per minute that you've chosen. Okay, so it's a very safe way to go to make sure the person remains aerated. In terms of the minute ventilation, <clears throat> let's talk about the tidal volume. For somebody who does not have ARDS, like a regular individual, generally speaking, you want to dial in about 8 to 10 milliliters of air 
per kilogram ideal body weight, not actual body weight. To be honest with you, what I kind of do is eyeball the person, kind of figure out roughly what their body weight should be, multiply by 10 because that's easy, and then just subtract a little bit. So if you get some person who's kind of, you know, 90 kilograms, 85 kilograms, times 10 would be 850. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. I dial it back to like 600 or 550. I kind of start from there. So you don't have to get too anal about the math. Somewhere they would have 8 to 10 cc's per kilo. If the person does have ARDS, however, you need to dial that back, and it would be more in the order of 5 to 6 cc's per kilo of air. Again, ideal body weight, okay? Now, <clears throat> you'll recall as the amount of tidal volume drops, minute ventilation drops, because minute ventilation is respiratory rate times tidal volume. So as the tidal volume drops, minute ventilation drops. As minute ventilation drops, PCO2 goes up and pH goes down. <clears throat> so you might have to offset this decrease in tidal volume with an increase in the respiratory rate to try to maintain the same pH. Otherwise, you'll get a progressively severe respiratory acidosis. So let's talk about how you're going to figure that out. You've decided that your patient, based on their ideal body weight and their underlying lung function, ARDS or not, you've decided you're going to give your patient, let's say, 500 cc's of air tidal volume. Each breath will be 500 cc's. What should the respiratory rate be? Kind of depends on where they are. Remember, when you and I are bored, watching TV, doing a whole lot of nothing, by and large, all comers, all sizes, we take about a 500 cc tidal volume, roughly. As well, a normal resting respiratory rate, when you're bored, by and large, is about 10 breaths per minute, roughly. So that means normal resting minute ventilation is five liters a minute. 500 cc's times 10 is 5,000. So if the person was otherwise normal, you dial in a minute ventilation of five, he'd be okay. But this guy by definition is not normal. In fact, he's critically ill on the ventilator. That means he's generating acid one way or the other, and so no matter what, he or she is going to require a higher minute ventilation than that. How much higher kind of just depends on where they are in their pH. So if you want to start by giving this person, let's say, a minute ventilation of eight liters per minute, you just simply take 8,000 divided by 500 and you figure out the respiratory rate. Because I'm really bad at math, let's go with 10 liters per minute, in which case I'll be dialing in a respiratory rate of 20, because 20 times 500 is 10,000, right? So that's how you're gonna figure out the respiratory rate. It's what is my target minute ventilation? A normal, a normal minute ventilation is five liters per minute. That is normal. So then you can decide how much above normal you wanna be based on the pH and the PCO2 and dial in the respiratory rate. Now, this is where you need to kind of go to the ventilator and look at, look at two graphs in particular. There's a graph that looks like this. It's on all the ventilators, okay? This is a flow curve. This is the amount of air that's moving back and forth in milliliters per minute, okay? And this is kind of what it looks like. That's what it looks like. This is how you and I breathe. By convention on this graph, anytime the line is above the x-axis, the patient is inhaling. Anytime the line is at, below the x-axis, the patient is exhaling, by convention. The slope is just the rate at which they're inhaling and exhaling. So think about it for a second. Just breathe with me for a second normally. You go, <gasps> and there's a pause. Then you go, <sighs> and there's a pause. <gasps> pause, <sighs> pause. 